Hi guys, hopefully you can all see me, hopefully you can all hear me, maybe if you can write a comment in the live chat if you can hear me okay, but a happy Sunday evening, um, I can see a few of you are dropping in the chat already, we've got uh, Life Redefined TV, thanks for joining Evening Campers, um, we've got Liam Gillen, one of my good friends, hey buddy, hope you're keeping well, I'm very well, thank you sir, and it's lovely to see you on my uh, third live stream ever on YouTube, we've got uh, Matt Brighton, uh, another fellow YouTuber saying, what's the future plans for YouTube? Oh, so we got our first question already. Amazing. I'll answer that in just a second, Matt. Um, so basically, I am doing a live Q&A session, in case you can't tell from uh, the stuff on the screen. Um, I would like you to ask any questions you want to me. Now, this can be about my journey towards financial independence. This can be about my investing in buy property. This can be about investing in general in things like index funds. Whatever you want to ask, I will do my best to answer. The one main thing that I must say is I'm not a financial advisor. So whatever I say tonight is not financial advice. It's my opinion. Okay, so it's how I would act personally. That doesn't mean it's the right decision for you. But I'm sure I don't need to lecture you anymore. So we've got a few more people uh, dropping in. We've got um, Matt saying that the um, the audio and um, the visual is Perfect, so thank you. Uh, Trade M, happy Sunday. Yes, nice to see you. Liam, can hear you well and clear. Thank you very much. And Paul, I hear you. Brilliant. So like I said, don't forget, drop some comments in, the, uh, sorry, some questions in the comments box below. I'll happily uh, take them through the night. I've got um, some questions and I've actually got a bit of a, a confession. I wasn't supposed to be doing a live tonight, so I had a video planned for tonight, but the house renovation has taken over at the moment because we've got some sort of major work starting in the next couple of weeks. Um, so instead, I decided to come and join you live because I upload every Sunday, every week, so I couldn't not upload for you guys, so I, th I thought I'd join you. Andrew's just popped into chat. Hello, mate. Nice to see you. Another a fellow YouTuber who kindly interviewed me on his channel. So um, my what I'll do, um, I think we'll answer Matt's question first because he's watching live right now. Um, so Matt asks, what is the future plans for YouTube? Um, Part-time hobby or possible time full-time serious business? So firstly, thank you very much for your question, Matt. Um, honestly, right now it's a hobby, no doubt about it. Um, I have actually got the... Um, I've actually got, um, sorry, I just saw Andrew's comment about Gary missing a video and I thought he meant the video wasn't working, so it got me worried. Um, I've actually got a video ready to talk about how much I'm getting paid currently from the ad showing on my YouTube channel. Maybe put a comment in the comments box here of how much you're thinking I'm getting each month. Um, and that will show you why, at the moment, it's just a hobby. So that's a bit of a hint for you. But yeah, at the moment, it's a hobby. Um, if it could ever pay me a wage like it does for some people, that'd be incredible. But it's definitely not my aim. I'm very lucky that I love my job. I'm a photographer and it's an awesome job. Um, so that is... Um, a good thing that I'm not sort of in the in I'm not chasing the money because I enjoy the way I earn my money currently if I could get to the point where I'm earning money from it that it could pay me a wage that'd be incredible um, I have set it up as a company so I've got a limited company set up because of um, my earnings in my other company I was a bit worried about sort of um, tax thresholds and things like that so it is already um, set up as a um, limited company so maybe one day we'll be going towards being more of a full-time uh, uh, channel but right now uh, with my 1800 subscribers unfortunately I'm not earning quite enough money so some more over to comments uh, Verona just joined hey Gary hope you're having a great Sunday thank you very much lovely to see you Andrew Gary missing a video I know I can't believe I didn't get today's video done so uh, I had to do something a uh, life redefined I think the realization of COVID is far from over um, has set in we can forget travel plans for another year at least do you guys think that the next 12 months is a great chance to focus and grow financially incredible question really incredible question um so like you i am um what's the correct word for it but i am a bit worried about the next few years well next year um it worries me a bit here in the uk that furlough has been extended through till september hasn't it yet the roadmap's supposed to be all finished and back to normal by june so that's a, a little bit of a worry um so i agree that 
I think the next year or two is going to be interesting. The industry I'm in, the events industry, has been hit really hard. And right now, I cannot see an event with 150, 200 people being back. And it makes sense to me, you know. I wouldn't want... Even, even gigs and concerts, is it clever right now to have a thousand plus people in a room? I don't know. I suppose ultimately it's all going to come down to how good the vaccines are. Um, but to your actual question about um, focus on um, gr growth financially, I think it's a, it's an awesome time to do this. And I think that COVID over the last year has been a real lesson to people. Firstly, making sure that they have the correct emergency funds to protect themselves especially if they were worried about losing their job or anything. Secondly, it's made people probably um, realise what they really appreciate in life. And maybe the things they're not they're missing so much isn't necessarily the things that cost them so much money, you know. Maybe we're just missing seeing our friends, seeing our family and things like that. So I agree completely. I think the next year or so could be a fantastic time to really concentrate on ourselves. It's certainly something I've been doing and I know some of my sort of viewers have been doing too because they've been telling me um, and they've been really concentrating on in introducing some side hustles and stuff. Uh, maybe that's another comment in the comments box. If you've introduced a side hustle in the last year maybe tell me what it is um so uh, thanks for a great comment um so andrew said gary next youtube millionaire okay well when you see my um, youtube income report we'll see how close i am uh, matt's guess i guess around six pounds cpm uh, 9k monthly views 54 pounds okay great guess diy katie guessed 82 pounds damien talks money who is uh, another fellow youtuber has guessed 200 quid a month so all great guesses and i will be sharing a video very soon so that's a little bit of a teaser um so yeah looking forward to that so I'm going to move over onto my screen and start working through the questions that have been sent in by viewers. But if you have any questions, um, pop them in the comments box below. I've just seen Justin Wilkins uh, pop in. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Um, Justin was on my channel a while back. If you haven't watched the interview, maybe go and check it out after today's low sc uh, live screen. Matt called me a tease. I'm so sorry, sir. But I've got to make you come and watch my videos, mate. I can't give it all away on a live stream, can I? Uh, DIY KT. And if the market crashes in the next 12 months, we will potentially get some great prices on index funds. That is very true. So um, I've certainly got a cash buffer right now ready to go. Um, that doesn't mean my... Um, my uh, what's the correct word? It doesn't mean my sort of approach to investing has changed. I'm still investing uh, regularly, but I have definitely got a cash buffer ready to go if there's particular uh, big drops. The problem being, of course, we don't know when the drops are at, its at its bottom, do we? So yeah, but great comment, KT. Uh, Susie's just said, "I'm curious. What do you think? What you'll do once financially independent? Will you stop working work part time?" Awesome question. Um, so my big aim, um, the biggest thing I'm working towards is for security. Um, for any of you guys that are self-employed, you may experience this yourself, but it's the worry of not knowing when work is next going to come in. Now, right now, I haven't got that concern whatsoever. Um, I'm very lucky that I'm very busy. Um, but it does worry me if I were to ever not be so busy to not I would hate to be worried about money and worried about my security. So by far, it's security. My plan is to continue working. I probably would reduce the number of jobs I do. So to give you a bit of context, I'm a wedding photographer. And right now, I shoot around 50 weddings a year, roughly. Sometimes more, sometimes less, um, which is a lot of work. With, with all the editing, you can imagine the thousands of photos we take. It's a huge amount of work. So I would definitely look at reducing um, the amount of work I do. And I would love to do some more, vol well, I say some more volunteering. I don't do any volunteering, unfortunately but I'd love to do some volunteering um, but really awesome question what would you guys like to do if you reach financial independence I love hearing that my channel is all about community it's, it's not sort of so much about me just blabbering on myself I'd love to hear about you guys too so what's your plans a life redefined I don't think financial independence is a destination it's a journey and a way of life I don't think you'll ever stop working you just do more of the things you enjoy I think that's a really great point and it's certainly the case from some of the big sort of blogs I read and stuff a lot of them say they're busier 
than they ever have been before, you know. So since retirement, they're they're even busier than they were before, or should I say since financial independence. Um, and I've experienced this a little over the last year with my job. I haven't been working over the last year, but I've found things that fill my time, YouTube being one of them, that takes a major amount of time, actually. Um, so I, I agree completely. Um, so Katie's just pointed out I missed Trade M's uh, question. So let's scroll up in the chat. Trade M, what would you say to someone who is a little reluctant to open a Stocks and Shares ISA? Um, so first of all, thank you for your question. I must say, again, it's not financial advice, of course. Um, but personally, if it were me, I would tell myself that I'm potentially missing out on um, some great tax uh tax advantage account you know so um every year we get a twenty thousand pound um tax-free uh allowance so to speak in a in an isa that doesn't have to be a stocks and shares isa it could be a cash isa or, or various other isas that i've spoken about on the channel before so that would be the first thing i say to someone who's a little bit reluctant i'd almost say why not open it at least just sort of step your foot in dip your toe in the water you know you've got nothing to lose I think stocks and shares ISAs probably are scary to some people because I think we've been bought up with the stock market being a scary place. We've been bought up saying, oh, you put your money in the stock market, you will lose it. And it's not necessarily the case. And I hope I speak about this enough on this channel that you guys are starting to see this yourselves. You know, if we're looking at a long term investment, the stock market can actually be a great place to invest our money. Um, so I think that um, I can understand completely why someone might be reluctant to open the Stocks and Shares ISA. But I definitely um, encourage them to watch more videos. Um, I'm not necessarily saying my videos but YouTube's a great source of education. I'd, I'd suggest them doing some Googling and, and reading some, through some blogs, uh, especially some of the financial independence blogs that really sort of dig into the, the long-term investing side of things, which I'm big on. Um, I'm not so much a buying and stock, like trading. I'm, that's not really me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but it's not really me. Um, but it's an awesome question. I'd say just um, personally, I think you're not you necessarily, I know you're asking generically, but I think you're potentially missing out on a great opportunity that you should definitely look into. Um, and then the other great opportunity to look into along with an ISA is of course your a pension, you know, whether or not that be an employer's pension or if you're self-employed like me, uh, a self-invested personal pension, also known as a SIP. Um, but thanks for a great question, Trade M. So, and also thanks to Katie for pointing it out that I was a donut and I'd missed it. So on to the first viewers question. So these are some of the questions I've got over the last few months that I thought I'd throw in tonight and get in my quick live stream. So um, Hash asked me, do I invest monthly in this ETF or one time lump sum investment and forget? Now this was on one of my um, portfolio updates. Um, so to be honest with you, both. So up until recently, I invested monthly so every time i got paid from my company on the on the day after the money come out of my company the money then went into my investment and that's what's called paying yourself first the reason i like this method is because the money moves straight out of my account before i get the chance to smell it or touch it or anything that way it doesn't give me the opportunity to do anything with that money and the investing and saving part of my money is is forced upon me, you know. It it, it is a it's a habit, you know. Um, it's it's it's. I don't know the right word, but basically, I've got no other way of doing it because it's automatic. So, um, up until recently, I did that. However, I recently got to the end of my. Um, well, towards the end of my tax year in my company, and I had a chat with my accountant, and I had quite a bit of money owed from my company to me. So I've recently put one big lump sum in. Now, I have to admit, I was thinking, is it the right time? Is it going to crash? And I had to talk to myself. I had to tell myself, Gary, you're trying to market time, which is what I sit here telling you guys that you shouldn't do. You cannot market time, you know. For all I know, that day where I put my money in could have been the lowest day the stock market's ever going to be. Or the next day it could have dropped and never come back again for years of years and years, you know. To be honest with you, I put quite a large sum of money in and it did drop over the next few days. And I was like, typical, it was going to happen, wasn't it? But I think right now it's actually back above where I invested. However, 
stock market's looked a bit wobbly recently, hasn't it? So what do you think is going to happen over the next few months in the stock market? But um, thanks for a great question, Hash. So I see a few more comments over in the uh, the comments. So Susie has said, yeah, I think I'd just reduce my hours. Uh, that'd be a massive thing for me. Spend some more time with family. I think I'd get bored if I didn't go to work at least a couple of days a week. I agree completely. And I think that's the great thing about financial independence, isn't it? You can choose how the life you want to live. And for so many people, stopping work isn't necessarily their dream retirement but there's so much pleasure coming from not having to go to work you know and not having to do these particular things I'm very lucky being self-employed that I do experience that sort of already I choose when I wake up you know unless of course I've got a wedding that day um, apart from that when I'm just working from home editing and stuff I choose when I get up I choose when I go to the gym I choose when I'm working so, yeah, I agree completely. Uh, Glenn's just joined in. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining. And, um, Glenn, I said this on my last stream, but we are due a live very... Uh, sorry, we're due an interview very soon. And I know you're busy right now, but we've got it coming in. Uh, Paul said, I only opened my Vanguard ISA last year investing in Life Strategy 100 and the S&P 500. I hear a lot about the market... I hear... Sorry, I hear a lot about the market that the market may reset. What does this mean and how will it affect my investment? Okay, so I um, thank you for your question and for your comment. So again, it's not financial advice, but I think what you're sort of talking about is people are worried right now that stocks are quite highly valued. Some would say, some would say overvalued and some would say that we are due a correction. Um, so they say roughly these sort of corrections come every 10 years or so. You can look at charts and do Googling about it yourself. But um, a correction is going to mean a drop in, in the markets and potentially a drop in, in, the, in the value of your funds. So technically, you're going to lose value right now. But what I would like to say is you're not necessarily losing money. Although, let's say you've invested £10,000 and you've got, just for easy maths, you've got 1,000 stocks for that. Or, or a thousand shares for that, sorry. Um, so it's £10 per share. Does that make sense? Um, let's say the value of these shares now go down to £5. So obviously the value of your investments are now £5,000. So I know it seems like you've lost £5,000. However, you still own the same amount of shares. Does that make sense? I hope I'm explaining it well and I'm not just mumbling. But you still own the exact same amount of shares. You only lose money when you buy when you sell. Sorry, not when you buy. You only lose money when you sell. Cool, this is great financial advice, guys, isn't it? You only lose money when you sell. So, providing you've got a long-term investing strategy, which is what I am huge on, I'm a great believer that you will not, you will not lose money. You can look at the S&P 500 over the last however many years, and you can see that upward trend in line over time. I agree, it's up and down like a roller coaster and it looks like a scary ride. But it's only scary when you're looking at those much smaller time horizons. When you start extending it to 10 years or something, you can see the obvious growth. You've got to remember, during that time... We're also forgetting that we're going to be paid some dividends and income in the in the fund, which hopefully we reinvest in. You also forget that you're presuming you're never, ever going to put any more money into the funds, which maybe you will. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, the main thing I would say is make sure you've got your risk um, risk preference worked out because, um, like me, you're 100% in equity in, in the Life Strategy 100 and the S&P 500. So they're more volatile, basically. They're going to have bigger ups and downs. So when they go down, they're going to go down much harder. But when they go up, they're going to go up much harder too. Um, so that would be what my, some of my sort of um, what I'd be thinking about, Paul, and I hope that helps. I hope I've explained it okay because I feel like I've been blabbering for ages, mate. But um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I would say they're saying that there could be a correction due. And to be honest, I agree. I've been saying this for the last year. However, have you seen the markets over the last year? And they've been making me look like a right dummy. Um, so life redefined. I've not. I've not jumped on the crypto train and I generally think it could all turn into dust if a new accepted currency is created and regulated. What are your thoughts on crypto and do you own any? Awesome question. Thank you. I do own a small amount. Um, nothing life changing, but still a f sub not substantial. That is a completely wrong word, but still a lot of money. I invested it about five years ago, I think, four years ago, five years ago, in um, Bitcoin. 
So you can imagine the sort of returns I've seen over the last years. It's been incredible. It worries me, however, the, mo the, the money I've got in there I could afford to lose and I've sort of decided that that's my, I've forgotten about that money almost, you know, it's just in there to see what happens. Um, I don't have a good understanding of cryptocurrencies and I don't know if it's the future or if, like you, you said, it's going to turn into dust completely. Um, I know some people right now are saying that it's, it's obvious it's going to be the future, you know, it's a digital currency, that's clearly the way we're going. Um, but to be honest, I don't have a strong opinion on it, I simply don't know, which is why I don't invest any more money into it. Um, the growth it, from the Bitcoin I own has been truly remarkable. Um, I haven't looked recently and I know it's still been going up, I think. But last time I checked, it was about 700% up. So it's been unreal. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't have a big opinion because I don't know enough about it. I've seen a lot of YouTubers also jumping on to like making videos about um, Bitcoin. So I know it's a popular subject right now, but it's not really something that uh, I'm going to invest more into right now. I don't think. What do you guys think of cryptocurrencies i'd love to hear i'd really love to hear so geo said um well done gary i'm really enjoying your videos keep going mate thank you very much it's really kind of you to say and uh I, I love putting the videos out for you guys. That's why I had to log in and do a stream tonight because I couldn't not have my Sunday video going up. So I thought I'd come and say hello. So the kind words really mean a lot. So thank you. So we're going to move on to the next um, viewer question that someone's uh, sent in. Don't forget to um, leave comments. I see Tom's just logged in. Oh, yeah, there we go. He's back in. Hello, Tom. How you doing, mate? Um, so Stephen said, great video, Gary. Would you ever sell some of your buy to lets and pay off your own residential mortgage? Um Great question, Stephen, and Stephen's a regular watcher of my channel. Um, I would definitely consider it, and I have considered it. I, um, I did consider recently selling one of my buy-to-lets, actually, um, but in the end, I decided not to. Um, right now, Katie and I have decided to overpay our mortgage, so we are actually paying off our residential mortgage faster than we need to be, um, which I know... Don't get me wrong, I know, before you all sort of start shouting at me in the comments, I know it's not necessarily the best thing we can do with our money. I know that mathematically we're better off investing it, but um, that was a big wish of Katie's, that she would like to um, pay off the mortgage early. Now, I get Katie to do a lot of stuff that suits me financially, so it's only fair that I do things that suit her financially. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, at the moment... We're overpaying our mortgage anyway, so hopefully the aim is we'll have the mortgage paid off and we won't have to sell any of the buy-to-lets, but I'd definitely consider it. It depends on my lifestyle, you know. Right now, I've got the the sort of get up and go to keep to keep cracking on with the buy-to-lets. Does that make sense? One day, maybe I won't be so inspired to keep doing the buy-to-lets and I'll decide, you know, enough's enough, it's time to sell up and, and make some profit from them, hopefully, providing there hasn't been a, a property uh, bubble. Um... So Tom just said, Gary is the UK Meet Kevin. I'm really sorry, Tom, but I don't know who Meet Kevin is. But I am going to make a note to, to Google that and work out if that's a compliment or if that's a really bad uh, insult. But I hope it, you're a lovely guy, so I presume that's a massive compliment. So thank you, mate. Susie said, I haven't invested into crypto. It seems too volatile for me. It's scary, isn't it, how much it goes up and down. And... Um, I've got to be honest, I just don't know enough about it. But thanks for sharing your thoughts, Susie. Tom, you're under thumb, Gary. Buy some Tesla with it. Uh, yeah, possibly, mate. Um, she, funny enough, she always seems to win arguments and, and win our decisions on everything. She's got this very clever way of making me feel like I've got a chance to share my opinion without being able to share my opinion. Maybe that's normal. Gio said, could you please let us know if we have to pay tax here in the UK for dividends earned by index funds in the USA? Does 2000 tax-free dividends eligibility apply for US earned dividends thanks in advance so Geo to be honest with you I think I'm a bit worried about answering that question because I'm worried it could come across as financial advice if I was answering the question uh, talking to myself and and sort of giving my opinion my opinion is it depends how the um, shares are or um, stocks are owned so it depends if they're wrapped in the correct sort of tax wrappers um however 
I wouldn't want to answer and I'm probably not the best person to answer so I'd recommend you getting sort of financial advice about that so I'm really sorry not to be able to help more but I do have to be careful about the information I give out when it could fin affect you financially I have to respect that you know I, I can't lie I'm not a financial expert I'm simply sharing my journey towards financial independence um, but my understanding is that I keep my investments wrapped in things like ISAs and SIPs which helps me avoid paying um, capital gains etc so um i hope that sort of answered the question and i'm sorry for avoiding it but i'd hate to give you any advice that doesn't um that doesn't work in your favor you know um but thanks for your comment and thanks for your question i really appreciate it life redefined being mortgage free is my target in the next three years it sets you on such a good foundation sorry foundation for the future and is the ultimate position of fu your other half is right gary yeah i know there's there's both sides of the story and and i get it you know if, if interest rates start going up we'll be pleased we made these decisions and i can definitely see the the benefits of being mortgage free completely you know i um, i always remember my that my dad saying to me that a big relief for him was when he paid off his mortgage and he knew my old house was was that as you know and no matter what happened we had somewhere to live so i understand completely tom said gary do you hold um any physical gold and silver what are your opinions on it no i don't hold any gold or silver on um i don't again i don't completely understand um that sort of thing and it worries me how volatile it is and how up and down it can be I know people say it's a hedge against inflation and blah, 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 blah. Um, what are your opinions on it? I suppose I'm going to throw the question back at you. I don't hold any. For me, it's property, it's um, stocks, and it's investing. I know it sounds cheesy, but I'm sorry to say it. it's investing in myself. You know, it's, it's businesses, etc. Um, but I'd love to hear your opinions on it, guys. So we're going to, before... Um, waiting for some more questions to come in we're going to move on to the next viewers question so dan said hi gary loving the channel i could watch it all day that's very kind of you mate thank you good luck with the house renovation i've just filmed part three of the house renovation part three where's my fingers there part three is filmed today so editing will be happening part three is coming it looks so different from my last update so make sure you come and check that out a question for your next q a i've seen you mention the simple path to wealth one of the best books ever by the way it's in the description if you want to go and check it out it's an affiliate link as an influential uh, influential book to you what was a key takeaway for you and how did it change your strategy to obtaining financial freedom so i cannot give you just one key takeaway because i think it's such an incredible book book um i'm sure you guys must think that jl collins is paying me money to keep talking about this book because you must be so fed up of me hearing sorry you hearing me talk about it but um big key takeaways for me firstly i had been working towards financial freedom without realizing it for a lot longer than i when i found the financial freedom movement does that make sense so i'd always known that i wanted to work towards early retirement i always wanted to, i always wanted to take control of my finances i'd not been investing in property since i was a teenager um so i always knew that i wanted to have financial freedom without knowing that i was on this fire path so to speak so the first key takeaway for it was giving me um, knowledge on investing in something else other than property and that was the reason I actually come across the book um, the reason I come across the book is at the time I was searching for other investments apart from property I was worried how much my money was in property and not much else so I was googling what else I could uh, invest in and I come across this sort of rabbit hole or whatever you call it of financial independence and i started reading and consuming in it and a big thing that was recommended to me was choose fi podcast and the simple path to wealth and i read the simple path to wealth and it just blew my mind and it made me realize how simple it is i know that sounds really stupid of me saying hence the title of the book but he makes jail collins makes it so super simple he explains it in such simple terms some of the books i've read i think it can make things sound very complicated and very sort of unenjoyable but jl collins just makes it everything so simple so achievable um and he realized he made me realize that there's another way to it apart from property which was the big thing i was looking for at them at the time so that was another key takeaway for me 
being so simplified, you know. Um, understanding about the sort of actual calculations of early retirement, so things like the 4% rule, etc. And I know some of you will have differ differing opinions on the 4% rule, but it's definitely a useful rule of thumb to know roughly where I'm at in regards to my financial journey. Um, but I can I can honestly say it's one of my favourite books I've ever read, and if you haven't read it, Dan, I'd highly recommend you go and check it out. So Tom's just asked in the uh, comments, will you be sticking with Vanguard for your ISA this year? I will. I will this year. Um, and I have actually been suggested by a friend to look at Interactive Investor, as apparently their, their fees are slightly lower. I haven't looked into this, so I can't, I can't say if that is correct or not. Um, but he said, I don't know if it's once you re reach a certain amount, but he said their fees are slightly lower. So maybe one day I'll look at moving over. The reason I am such a Vanguard fanboy is they're sort of the OGs of um, this index investing, etc., aren't they? Old Jack Bogle was quite a genius, and it was him that sort of... And the fact that they've been around for so long brings me big confidence, you know? The fact that this company has been around for years... The customer service is incredible. Every time I ring up, I speak to someone that can answer my question instantly. You know, I don't speak to sort of just a generic call center where they don't really know what they're talking about. So at the moment, yes, I'm sticking with Vanguard. Um, are, you, are you guys thinking of moving ISA providers then? I was wondering if uh, anyone's thinking of changing. So life redefined. I've started eBay reselling again and often getting 200% return on investment within a week. That's unreal. Do you think investing in your business instead of index funds is overlooked in the FI community as returns are often higher? Yes, I do. I think I think a lot of things is overlooked in the FI community, and I may get some hate for saying this, but I think a lot of things are overlooked in the FI community. And I think people have got such motivation towards that end goal, which I understand, but I think sometimes they forget about the other options in life and about balance in life too. Um, so I think another thing that's quite overlooked in um, FI is is property investing, which has been something that's been very successful for me. Um, but yes, I do think that people forget about investing in businesses, you know, and maybe creating businesses. Ultimately, an index fund is only ever going to track the market. It's going to try to replicate the performance of the market, you know. So it's, it's ultimately, it's limited what it's going to perform like, right? Your business could reach the stars, you know, you could be the next Alan Sugar, you know, you could. So, yeah, I agree completely. Um, it shouldn't be forgotten about. And working for yourself is a, an amazing thing, you know. It gives me great opportunities. Um, it's, it's made me uh, a great income over the years. And it's allowed me to design a life that suits me. So, yeah, I agree completely that it's definitely uh, overlooked sometimes. Um, so on to the next viewer question. So Asbo asked me, what would you do at the age um, 17, 18 to start and do as best financially in the UK? So if I had a chance to go back to 18 years old, which was 13 years ago, I'm 31 now. Um, if I could go back to my 18 year old self and tell myself something, um, Bearing in mind, I didn't have any high interest debt. I didn't have any sort of big debts at all, actually. I was quite sensible on saving already. I would tell myself to invest a small amount each month in a stocks and shares ISA and start my investing journey earlier than I did. I would be investing in something like, obviously, knowing how the market's performed over the last 10 years, I would have told myself to invest in the S&P 500. But if not, I probably would have told myself to invest in like a world tracker fund and just put in what I can into a in uh, into an index fund, low cost. Um, and, and that's probably the biggest advice I'd give me as an 18 year old. Luckily, I didn't have a spending bug. I didn't have any problems with saving. I didn't have any problems with um, high interest debt. So um, luckily, I wouldn't have to sort of tell myself off for that. So but I must sort of mention those things in case you would want to know about that. Um, but yeah, for me, that would probably be the one biggest uh, thing I'd tell myself. Second thing i will tell myself is that this is going to sound really cheesy, but money's not going to bring you happiness, Gary. Because as an 18-year-old boy, I was really driven by money too much, way too much. And I really thought that when I reached particular financial milestones, that it was going to make me happier. And it's such a cheesy expression, but it doesn't make you happier, you know. And getting a balance in life is what's truly going to make you happy. 
And before COVID hit, I really had an amazing balance of my life. I really loved my life. Obviously, COVID is a much uh, different time and it's been a, a challenging time for us all, hasn't it? So, um, but yeah, great question, Asbo. Thank you. Um, so on to the next viewer question, then we'll head back over to the chat if any of you got some questions to fire in. Uh, JK Fishing said, hi, great video. Just one question. Have you ever had issues with drawing your money from Vanguard? Looking at reviews online, this seems to be a common thing. No, no, I've never had to withdraw money from Vanguard, so I can't comment personally. However, I have read so many people investing in Vanguard who are withdrawing from it and they're having no difficulties at all. So I've never seen any feedback about it being a problem. Um, maybe that some of the um, live viewers right now could comment in the box if you've ever heard of problems with Vanguards and withdrawals. I'd be really interested to hear that, especially as I invest in Vanguard myself. But no, I've never heard any problems with um, with Vanguard withdrawals. But thank you for your question, JK Fishing. So back over to the chat. Um, first of all, I just realized, life redefined, I did say wow when I was reading it out. But 200% return on investment is incredible, mate. Like, congratulations, that's huge. Um, Stun like, incredible, really, really, really incredible. So Tom said, I'm in the middle of transferring to Vanguard from Nutmeg. I remember you saying in a previous uh, live stream now, actually, that you're coming over from Nutmeg, but they're taking far too long. I've changed your mind, I think, and I might go to Trading212 now as I can hold my stock number the uh, ISA, under the ISA umbrella too. Yeah, um, I'm sorry to hear that because I have to admit, I transferred my ISA to Vanguard and it was a seamless process. Um, I transferred from AJ Bell to Vanguard Vanguard and they were brilliant so I'm sorry to hear they're not performing for you mate um, I can't imagine why it's been caused by Covid I can't see why it would affect them that much unless they're on reduced staff maybe but unfortunately I I didn't experience that and I'm really sad to hear you have because I know Vanguard is a huge provider here in the UK and it, around the world and you will hear so many fantastic things about them so I'm sorry to hear you're not getting the same experiences mate so I apologize what well, I don't need to apologize I suppose but you know what I mean I'm, so, I'm sorry that I speak so highly of Vanguard and you're not experiencing the level of service that I experience um, life redefined um, my stocks and shares I series with Hargreaves, Hargreaves Lansdowne I know there are cheaper options but they allow me to buy Vanguard and also other funds such as Fundsmith and Linzel train plus they have an easy you to use platform so I have heard this before I've heard amazing things about Hargreaves Lansdowne and um, unless I'm mistaken, one of my um, favourite podcasts, Meaningful Money, Pete Matthews, he invests with Hargreaves Lansdowne too. Um, so I've heard this from him and he says how easy the platform is to use and he's just happy with them. I can understand how it's also attractive that you can buy other funds apart from Vanguard and obviously that's one of the downsides to Vanguard. You can only buy Vanguard products on Vanguard. Um, which they claim to be a benefit that they sort of specialize in what they sell um, but I can understand how that could be a nice thing to have so um, yeah thanks for your comment so don't forget keep the comments firing over in the comments box if you'd like me to answer any questions uh, don't forget you can ask about me if you want you can ask about my vitalettes you can ask about anything you want and I'll do my best to answer um, so Fraser asked hey man what's your thoughts on Life Strategy 100 accumulation fund so firstly I must say again I am not a financial advisor, uh, so it's not financial advice. Um, but my personal opinion on life strategy is um, the life strategy funds are a fantastic starting point. They're a fantastic base. And I know many, many much more successful people than me that rely solely on the life strategy funds. Um, my, only, my biggest concern of the life strategy funds, and you probably would have heard it before, is how UK weighted they are. Um, I think the UK has been a bit flat over the last few years. So to, to have such a heavy amount of my investment in the UK, the UK actually makes up about 5 to 6% of the world market. But I think in the Life Strategy 100, I might be wrong, but I think it's more like almost 20% of the Life Strategy 100 is in the UK. So that's probably my biggest concern with them. Um, I do hear incredible things about life strategy, especially I, I like the idea of when I'm getting closer to retirement of introducing something like the life strategy 60 that's going to give me a nice balanced portfolio. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, 
it's hard to say. The big, my biggest sort of worry is about the uh, the, the being so UK weighted. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people, and I read a lot of people that would say just stick everything in life strategy. So make sure you do your research and pick what's right for you. But I hope the answer sort of helped a little bit. So one more viewer question, and we'll move back over to the um, the live chat and see if there's any more questions before we wrap up for the day. Um, so Joe asked, "Hey, what? Um, how about a video where to find and negotiating rates for tradespeople?" So awesome question, Joe. And I may well actually make this into a full video, but I thought i'd drop it into tonight's live um so we have been finding tradespeople for our refurbishment and what i use for my buy to let properties we've been using things like trust the trader and um, check a trade and i know some tradespeople will cringe when they hear this because they claim that not necessarily the best thing to do i also know I think Joe included has suggested a, a website called mybuilder.com. I haven't used them personally, but I know I've been recommended to them a few times. With regards to negotiating, the main advice I'd give, not that I'm any expert, but we certainly get free quotes. That's huge. You get an upper, a lower, and a middle. It gives you an idea of, of where the price is at, you know, um, and if you get two similar prices and one either really high or really low, it's going to make you think, well, why is this, you know? Um, so personally, that's our biggest thing. We get free quotes and then we can start working from there. We can, if we particularly like a trades person, but um, maybe they're more expensive, maybe we can use that in, an, in our negotiations. Um, but thanks for a great question. So... I've just realised I have one more viewer question, so I may as well answer the, my last viewer question that I've got lined up. During this time, if you want to ask any more questions, fire them in the box. I'm going to ask the last few questions in the box, and then it's uh, time to go. So uh, do leave any more comments and questions in the box uh, before we call it a night and say good night. So on to my final viewer question before moving over to the chat. Um, JCM said, Hi Gary, great video, just subscribe. Thank you for your support. Um, do you manage all your properties yourself? What are your pros and cons that you've experienced from not using an estate agent thanks a lot joe awesome question really awesome question um i don't want to try and be too sort of salesy but i've made loads of videos about this too so don't forget to go and check out my channel after this there's actually a buy to let playlist where i talk lots about self-managing my properties but i'll answer some of them in tonight's stream so yes i manage all of my properties yourself myself yourself myself um the pros of not using, and actually, let's do the cons. Let's you do the pros of not using an estate agent first. So the pros of not using an estate agent. Firstly, the biggest pro is no one's going to care for my property the same way I do ultimately. So you know that you you've got. No one, you're never going to trust anyone more than yourself that are going to look after your property and treat it the way you wish it to be looked after. Um, another pro comes down to. If you've got the wrong estate agent, like I did over my years of using agents, sometimes the service can be questionable for the money you pay. And sometimes I found I was simply paying for them pretty much to take the money and pass it on to me. And apart from that, it didn't feel like they did much more. Um, I have spoken about this quite heavily, so I won't go into too much detail. But when I took over management of my properties... Some of the tenants were telling me that they'd had problems for, for a long time and they'd been talking to the agents about them and none of this had been passed on to me. And one of those problems was actually quite a minor leak, which was actually damaging my property. So that was frustrating. Whereas obviously, trust me, if tenants have got a problem, they're going to tell you about it. There's no doubt about it. They're not going to live with a leak. So it was frustrating that they hadn't told me about these problems as I would have just sorted them. Um, so there's some of the pros of not using an agent. But I suppose the biggest pro, of course, is it saves you money. By using an agent, of course, you're going to have to pay for that service. It's not going to be free. So one of the biggest pros is it saves you money. I would also say that... Um, managing properties yourself you can build a relationship with the tenants now this was actually going to be one of my cons too or pros whatever way you look at it um but i can build relationships with my tenants and my tenants because i build relationships with them and i show them that i am a human being my tenants seem to respect me back you know because i treat them with respect and if they question if they message me with a question or with a problem i sort it i answer it you know and i don't keep them waiting Things are sorted quickly. Um, so that's a massive thing that um, that I would sort of suggest with um, 
against using the estate agents. Now, the the sort of um, cons of managing property yourself. So one of the cons I just sort of spoke about, you could flip on its head. Um, a con of managing it is you do have to deal with the tenants, and some people won't like this. Some people may not like being put under pressure of having to deal with tenants and deal with problems. I know some people may be a bit shy or a bit nervous about bringing up a problem and telling someone they can't do something or they need to live differently. Some people may find that uncomfortable um another con is it's time consuming it is almost like running a mini business and if you don't have the correct systems and, and workflows in place um it could quickly sort of take over your life um i personally don't think managing my properties because of the systems i've got in place is that time consuming anymore um of course there are times where multiple problems come up at the same time and it's one of those you're suddenly having to juggle a few balls along with the normal balls you're juggling. Um, but yeah, they're some of the sort of biggest cons of managing your own property. Um, I suppose actually I've missed one massive one that by using a professional like an estate agent, they're going to be up to date hopefully with the latest rules and regulations because things do change a lot in the buy to let market um, and it's important that you keep up to date with the latest uh, rules and regulations. So I am now going to move over onto the chat and answer as many questions as I can before I call it a night. I've been on for almost 50 minutes, um, so I'm going to answer the last few questions. So if you've got any more questions, fire them in the box. I'm going to answer them and we're going to say goodnight. So um, the last question I answered was uh, life uh, defined, redefined. So Tom then asked, what's your net worth? So I have never shared this live. I've never shared it on my Vanguard portfolio updates and I think I'm still never going to share it and I'm sorry about that. The reason I've decided not to share it is for multiple reasons. Firstly, I wanted financial independence to feel like it's achievable for everyone and it's not just achievable because I've got multiple properties and I've got a successful business and things like that. And I didn't want to come across like it's only been achieved because I was a high earner and I've got these properties paying me a large sum of money. So that is one of the reasons why I've never shared it. I have been thinking of introducing actually sharing my actual figures in my Vanguard portfolios. But the next worry is, of course, security. It has also worried me that how much information do I want to give away online? You know, ultimately, I'm talking to the world. You know, I know I have 1800 subscribers, but my videos can be seen by anyone. So they're probably my two biggest reasons of why I haven't um, shared my net worth. I see Tom's just put great dodge rate. Um, I've considered it. I have considered it. And I like I, I say how I just want to be honest and open to you all. And I know this is one of the only things that I don't actually talk about. But when I first started doing my Vanguard portfolio updates, this is why I said like, it's the percentages that matter. I'm showing you this this works, you know, what I'm doing works, you know. And when the markets drop, I'll show you. I'll be honest with you. I'll show my, my portfolio might be multi multiple percent down. The figures as such don't really matter. And I do, I do worry that the amounts may seem... A lot and may, maybe to people that are just starting they may be put off and thinking well I need this high net worth or high figures it's never going to work for me so like you said I hope I I hope I um dodged that well mate but thanks for a great question and I'm sorry that's one thing I'm not sort of open with and I have considered it and it has been a, a sort of moral like talking to myself should I share it um so um next up can you buy fractional shares of vwrl on vanguard no you can't you can only buy one full share at a time of vwrl um so yeah unfortunately no uh hambo 04 asked what's your opinion on holding an emergency fund in a life strategy mainly bond bonds and if you then required how long would it take to liquidate it from vanguard account great content as always Awesome question, and thank you for your kind words too. Again, not financial advice. I'm sorry for having to say that. But personally, I think it's a great idea, and I would definitely consider doing it. Um, but 
you sort of have answered it yourself in the second part of your question. I don't know quite how long it will take. I believe it can be done as quick as like the next trading day. The 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 trades can go through, but I'm not 100 percent sure. And I have considered. Um, I have considered doing it myself, and I think it's a great idea. The only reason I haven't done it is because at the moment I'm managing to max out my ISA so that I've got no spare money. I've got no spare allowance to put in my emergency fund, if that makes sense. If I had a spare allowance, I would definitely consider doing it. Um, however, on the other hand, bonds have been struggling recently, right? You may cringe at this, and I'm sorry, but I promise you I'll be honest. Right now, my emergency fund is in premium bonds. Which um, are you guys now hating me? I'm watching my subscribe my subscribers suddenly go down. But yeah, my emergency fund right now is in premium bonds. Reason being is, as you guys know from my my videos on my channel, um, my um, refurbishment is going through right now, so I need the money quite immediately. My bank accounts are paying next to nothing in interest, so I thought, why not have a go at premium bonds and have a chance of winning a million? Right, it's better than nothing. Life redefined. Do you use a SPV limited company or do you own buy to let yourself? Excuse me. So I don't own the, the properties for a company. They're all owned personally. I have um, sort of mentioned this on the channel before that this is probably one of the biggest mistakes I made in my investing career, so to speak. When I first started buying, it wasn't such an in thing to do. Well, at least I didn't know it was an in thing to do. And you have to remember, I suppose I was I was 18, 19 years old when I was buying the first ones. So I was a bit sort of immature to it and naive to it too. If I could change anything, I would go back and I would buy them through a company. There's no doubt about it. Um, but then buying through a company does come with its own unique set of challenges. So, um, but really awesome question. Personally for me, I would buy through a limited company if I had the chance to go again. So Tom mentioned that Hambo's question was a great question. I agree. He also said great dodge when I asked about my net worth. Um, it's definitely something I've considered sharing with you. Um, I suppose I can give away a little bit that I've reached a lean fire, basically. So at the moment, I'm earning enough money that I wouldn't have to work ever again. Um, I Every penny I pay myself from my company goes straight into my investments. Um, and I max my ISAs out each year. So that's given away quite a bit of information, a bit sort of quietly and a bit blurry. But um, my my um, my income from my uh, my company um, or is all invested. So I'm living off the um, income from my properties right now. Um, life redefined. Don't ever share it because once you share it, it's done. Yeah, I agree completely. Hambo said, even the 20% equity payout's better than most savings accounts. Um, I'm sorry, Hambo, I'm not entirely sure what that comment is regarding to. Um, sorry, mate. Uh, I'm not sure what that comment, maybe if you can confirm what that was aimed towards. I know we've spoken about a few different things. Tom mentioned NS and I, yeah, my premium bonds are with NS and I. Um, their actual payout is 1.15, I think. I think it was 1.35. Now, when what this sort of payout means, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed 1.15, but that's a sort of prize fund each month. So if there's £100 in the fund overall, you should get around £1.15, but it doesn't work like this. Um, to be honest with you, I've won three times and I haven't won four times. So, um, and I've got a fair, I think I've got about 30k in there, maybe a little bit more. Um, I think I've got about 35k in there at the moment. Um, but I know the money's going to be needed fairly soon, potentially on the house. And also, as you all know, right now my business is struggling and I'm all I need is a tenant or two to leave and potentially I could need a bit of a, an emergency fund so it's kept somewhere where I can reach it absolutely instantly. Uh, so Hambo said congratulations, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm really pleased that I've reached this sort of lean fire. Um, a lot of people don't know about this about me and I have been thinking about making a video about it but again I was a bit worried about it coming across a bit arrogant sort of saying oh, I'm financially free. Um, I actually reached this before I was 30. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it should be something I probably speak about, to be honest, because um, it's something that I've worked hard towards over the last 12, 13 years. Um, but thanks for your comments. So 
right now I've got 15 of you watching. Would anyone else like to fire a comment, a question, anything in um, the comments box before we call it a night? We're just shy of 9 o'clock, so right now we've been on for an hour. Um, I can't believe this many of you actually joined me, considering I only planned it half an hour before it started. Um, so, um, Hambo said, I meant 20% on the Vanguard equity funds, yeah, for the life strategy, and it's paid out more than savings accounts. I agree completely, and it's definitely something I've considered. If I had allowance left in my ISA, I think I'd do this, um, but I max my allowances out, so I have no spare money left um, to be able to then put my emergency fund in, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, no, I get that completely, and it's definitely, definitely something I've considered myself, um, but... Thanks for all your great questions as always. So one final shout out. Any final questions from you remaining 14 people that are on the live chat? I don't want to go before we call it a night. I can see the numbers just went down to 13. So maybe that's people saying, shut up, Gary, let's call it a night. But any final questions before I leave you be? While I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions, I'll let you know of some of the content that's due over the next couple of weeks because I've got some videos I'm really excited about. I have got my Vanguard portfolio update coming. I've got my trading 212 update coming. I've got my magic formula investing update coming. I filmed the part three of my refurbishment today. I filmed it today. I'm super excited to get that edited and, and shared on, sh on my YouTube channel. I've got my um, amounts of my monetization. So since my YouTube channel is being monetized, I'm going to make a video of how I went about doing that and how much YouTube is paying me for talking to you guys so i'm hoping you guys are going to be interested in that i know it's not strictly what i talk about but it is finance and it is side hustles and that's something i talk about um so yeah there, there's some of five of the videos that i've come got coming up over the next couple of weeks i'm super excited about every single one of them as always i'll throw in some uh, other content apart from those five i usually try and find something to speak about i'm trying to talk to you twice a week but it's becoming challenging especially as work is slowly picking up so it may be dropping down to one time a week but i'm definitely going to keep doing the live streams i love speaking to you guys i love seeing you guys keep coming back week by week or should i say month by month because i know i don't do it weekly you're sort of loyal fans to me and you come in every every month so i'm definitely going to keep the live streams going i just love chatting to you to be honest i could talk all night about personal finance so i can see no other questions have come in so it's time for me to call it a night so thank you so much as always for all your support i can't believe i'm at almost 2,000 subscribers i can't believe i'm monetized and i'm now being paid to make youtube videos um when I started this at the end of May, I didn't think I would be here this quickly, earning money. Um, and I truly made it just to share my journey, really, to chat. And the fact that I'm now earning money from it is just remarkable. And I've got enough of you guys that want to watch me and listen to me. Um, I think my girlfriend's surprised as she says I'm quite boring. <laughs> I'm only joking. She doesn't really. But apart from that, I'll see you on a video really soon. I'm sorry I've dragged on tonight. Um, but it was unplanned. Um, so, yeah, I can see you guys are saying goodbye. So, Hambo said, entertaining as always. Cheers for taking that question. Anytime. Just uh, like, thank you so much for being here. Tom said, cheers, Gary. So, lovely to see you all. Take care, guys.